number one starts in the winner bracket final of Race War 2017. It is Undead versus Humans, and it's 0-0 at the moment. Lucifer versus TH to start things in the upper left. It is Lucifer in the upper right. It is TH and Echo Isles. Definitely not a good Undead map, that's for sure. It was a horrible, horrible start for Lucifer on this map two days ago, where TH showed us a very good creep and expansion route, where he went down to this spot immediately to creep this, so as fast as it gets, but at the same time, creeping this spot with Militia gave him a guaranteed level 2 after like 3 minutes or so, and the Undead came in for an arrest, but he was too late. There was no chance for him to deny it. And I wonder if this will happen again, because I think on paper this should be by far the best thing to do to expand and level up for the human race. So far he only sends down the Archmage, and there's no creeping simultaneously. He doesn't have enough peasants to do that, I think. But yeah, I immediate expo, TH greedy as always. <clears throat> And is the sound alright? It sounds like a little quiet to me. So please let me know if there's uh, feedback coming. Uh, I will adjust as soon as I can. A player's forces are under attack. And this is kind of it's it's becoming kind of standard for Lucifer um, to creep that spot in the middle with skeletons. Kind of easy to do, to go against the Berserkers. It takes a lot of time to take out the Mauler though. So this is all time for TH to get the Tomb of Agility, no Tomb of Experience here. But the Town Hall is coming without a single tower. Acolyte is scouting this. So, not creeping anything in the north. Not uh, delaying the expansion for anything. This is as fast as it gets. Wind of Illusion can be decent, but not at this stage. Fiends, of course, to follow it up. And while TH is going for a super fast expansion, this is a fast tech for Lucifer on the other side. No tech on TH's side yet, obviously. So here he comes with skeletons. And yeah, there is no Arcane Tower. How much damage can he do? And how many peasants can he kill? He can't delay the expansion anymore because it's finished now. Gets uh, Almost gets rid of one peasant. Trying to... Save it though into the gold mine. Haha, <laughs> frost one a little too late. And so far, I didn't kill anything. Here's the first one. Peasant is still waiting. A few right clicks. Here's the coil, and now he gets out of here. Last time, he was down to like uh, 300 HP, so in the dark orange range. In game sound could be louder. Yeah, I thought so. A player's forces are under attack. Because I didn't hear my uh, too well either. Three ghouls, that's standard. Fiends to follow it up. Of course, Echo Isles is very hard. As you can see, the expansion is coming up fast. The distance between base and expo is huge. Even though the base to base distance is not that big. But if you have to cross the map, it's almost impossible to tear it down. So, I wonder... If he goes for the dual slaughterhouse again, definitely looks like it, and I think it's the most effective thing to do on Echo. But of course it's do or die, make or break. If it works, and you kill the Expo, then you win this most likely. And of course if you have a few destroyers left afterwards. But if you fail, then the human is definitely tier 3. And then the trouble begins. Boots of speed for the AM. Pretty nice. Mercenary edition. And a shop plus the arcane tower. So it's not really possible to harass this with uh, skeletons anymore. One, two, three, six attack. footmen, seven footmen. This uh, seems to be pretty solid. Tier 2 tech by TH as well. Who is the big favorite. But Lucifer makes his way to level 3. Fairly easy, fairly uncontested, but he doesn't do damage to TH at all. That's usually not supposed to be that way, but if you save all resources for that big push, then it makes sense, of course, to have that level 2 coil ready. 
Only one slaughterhouse this is so far. He does have the resources. But nice scout with that footman seeing. Okay, slaughterhouse is coming up. Maybe I can cancel it. DK with a big potion of mana. This is, of course, the best one. But it's even better to cancel the tier 2. Because now there's no statues coming. And again, just like yesterday, footmen seem to be enough to wreck Lucifer. He doesn't stand a chance against this. Losing the shop as well. So that means no orb in the near future. Who's coming at tier 3 anyway. But also no potions. No additional run of necromancies. He bought one. Another coil saves that ghoul. Well done. And the Tomb of Rex is coming up. Oh my god, this is so bad already. He didn't attack the Acolytes, but he did so much damage to the infrastructure. And didn't lose anything, right? He just walked in, killed two buildings, and he gets out again. Slaughterhouse and Tomb of Rex is coming back up. He lost one? Ah, to Nova. Okay, yeah, yeah, he exploded into ice shots. Yeah, 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 okay, he lost one, but come on. One or zero, it's not really a difference. And he's coming in again. Everything is healed up. TH playing this almost to perfection, canceling the slaughterhouse again. Another Nova to slow things down. Two footmen are hurt, but he gets a ghoul in return. And he needs that for the lumber, especially if the buildings get cancelled all the time. So... Oh, a second one. He doesn't have the spell, obviously, and the level 2 water elementals. They wreak havoc in this. Gets a kill. Nice snipe. But they're so tanky. And do so much damage. I wonder why he's not killing that ghoul there. Could easily do it. So he's going for the acolytes now, and that is dangerous because Lucifer is in tech. Nice surround on the acolyte. He can't escape at all. So mining is delayed by a lot. Level 4 on the DK though. So he kills quite a bit and he actually saves a lot of these acolytes. I didn't expect that to be honest. There is another water elemental but TH doesn't seem to be uh, too keen on summoning it yet. Ah, there it is. So we do have double water elementals again. <clears throat> oh, nice coil. So he has 5 acolytes. He's mining. And this is so much experience. Level 2 on the Lich already. TH is overstaying his welcome here. With the help of the Nerubian Tower. Tier 3 goes through. Without losing too much. But the problem is still that he doesn't have the second produ production building. A player's forces are under attack. So the Archmage distracted a lot. But what can he do now? Is it Blizzard time already? He has boots, he has a staff, he has a thousand two hundred gold. Massive lumber problems though. I bet he just built a lot of units and there it is. Tom of retraining and invis potion. Oh, this is so lame. <clears throat> but also so effective. Tier 3, rushed, paladin, second. And yeah, have fun with that, Lucy. I remember a game of Lucifer vs. Reprisal back in 2016, I guess. Or was it 15? Could have been both, I don't know. Where Re Re Reprisal did that with a Blood Mage. And yeah, there's no cancel to this. It is level 2 Brilliance Aura. It doesn't have that much mana though. And there's creeping this level 3 on the Lich. Orp is there. He can oh, 3 goals. Lucifer's not paying attention. His entire lumber income is gone. And there's another blizzard. And he can easily staff out. Doesn't even have to use a town portal. Just the staff is enough. And how effective was that? Let's take a look at the gold mines. He didn't kill anything, but 8,000 gold here, 7,400 gold here, 600 gold to Raz. Counter expansion coming up from Lucifer. He seems to feel pretty safe about oh, this just yet. Attack. Double workshop. Four tanks, most likely. Or if we're lucky, he's going for Knight's, water, uh, Knight's Gyros, which seems to be the case. Finally, the Slaughterhouse is up, but zero lumber. And only one ghoul. 33 supply only versus 45. This is not normal at all. Call Nova to the Paladin. 
Hands over the staff though, so he's safe for sure. Hold the light staff out, well done. A player's tanks are, are coming, attack. so it's knights against the fiends and tanks against the rest. I wonder how long this Haunted Goldmine will stand, because he should know that tanks are coming. And it's hard enough to defend one base, but if you give TH two angles to attack, then it becomes even harder to defend both things at once, because you need the Orb of Corruption there. The player's forces are under attack. Against the tanks, especially later, if they have... Like two two upgrades or so. Is under siege. One two zero already leaving the game. <laughs> Meat wagons coming. We try to defend this. Acolyte is moving south, so it is additional income, and his lumber income is back as well. Triple human hero combo. 3 one, 1 right? No, 4 one, 1 Not the best hero levels. And usually the humans use this defense when the undead sieges you. So you position your archmage here, you see some fiends here, and you spam blizzard on them. So they can't do that to, uh, to the forces are under attack. The town is under siege. And the first two tanks of the game, it's 1-1 one, one upgrade only just yet. So level 4 on the DK, level 3 on the Lich, no third hero yet. Panda, not there. Dark Ranger, not there. In the meantime, again Blizzard. Nice dual attack. He did that before. And it's working tremendously well. Going onto the Meat Wagon, the Knight will kill it as it's so fast. Doesn't kill the Crypt though. I think he should have focused it. TP's home now with all the acolytes as well. Coil Nova. That was a mistake. He's not mining there at all now. I think he didn't do it. They were most likely still repairing. But it's okay. With the cost of the town portal, he defends his crypt, he defends his slaughterhouse, he defends his black citadel. But more and more and more tanks are coming with additional upgrades. It's gonna be two, uh, one, two, uh, two, 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 two soon. <laughs> And Lucifer is overwhelmed. This is exactly what I meant. You can harass at both sides and that's too much. You can't go for destroyers. The delay was way too big from the initial harass with Footman where he killed the slaughterhouse. If you get rid of the slaughterhouse, what can the undead do without heal, without uh, mana regen? So the first match is over after 13 minutes and TH is superior taking the first map for the human alliance of TH, Romantic and Infi. And he's now 4-0 in a row. NSL was a 3-0, now it's a 1-0. Basically perfect seedings, I guess, for the human team. But the map was hard for the undead anyway. So it's his map choice now. I can think of TR if it wasn't vetoed. Um, last refuge, maybe. We do have 770 viewers already, and the next donation by Favortex, five bucks, he says, uh, thanks for the cast, Neo. You're welcome, man, you're welcome. I am a little tired, to be honest, but... That all doesn't matter if Warcraft is involved. So TH might take the lead, but I think this is a very, very safe point here for the humans. And I think after the seedings, they celebrated quite a bit. And it's funny that Chad is talking about it at the moment as well, um, that Lucifer is usually so good against human. It's one of his best matchups, maybe the best with Mira. But against TH, he's just horrendous. He is... Just horrendous. And I think the expo was just a plan B. 
because initially you want to push, you want to harass. That didn't work out with eight to nine footmen in the base. So I don't know what we're waiting for. There's a lot of streamers in this. <laughs> so game two starts. And here we have the players again, TH and Lucifer. How can you be 65% versus human in general and 17% versus one specific human player? He just is getting so distracted every single time. This style doesn't seem to work against TH. But we'll see about that. 1-0 lead for the human race and game is up. That's it. TH in blue for the humans and Lucifer representing the Scourge in the bottom left. And it is Last Refuge as expected. So Turtle Rock is most likely vetoed. But then there's still a lot of good maps for TH to choose from. Maybe Twisted if it's not vetoed. Maybe Terra Nasset if, if it's not vetoed. Um... Twisted. Did I say that already? I don't know. So even if he loses this, he has a good chance in game 3 and that's why it was so important to win map 1. Crypt Altar Tome. No graveyard yet. Oh, that's fairly normal. Archmage again. No Blood Mage, Mountain King or Paladin first shenanigans or... Uh, Beastmaster or something, which we have seen quite a bit recently from TH and Moon. So those two, the two big geniuses in Warcraft, who came, who come up with very unusual stuff and make it work, which is always uh, two different shoes, of course, uh, two different pairs of shoes, two different shoes. What? Ah, come on, whatever. So Last Refuge is pretty good for the Undead because there's a lot of stuff to creep and the distance from main to Expo isn't that uh, long as it is on Echo Isles. And you can do stuff on the way, like going for the shop, creep, whatever. And there's a lot of trees so you can hide and save your heroes. No, not your heroes, your, your air units over the trees. But Lucifer goes creeping again. Not harassing at all with this. Is the tech a little delayed then? Yeah. It's a ghoul build. Oh, with backpack. Okay. We've seen this quite a bit as well, especially 1 to 0 did it. One, like, not first, but, you know, he made it popular again in the scene to go for a ghoul rush. And tear down the expansion. Are under That's why he's able to pull them with him and creep with them. That should be the. Oh, there's still no tech. Is he fully committing to this push? It's a very late tech, I think. A town is under siege. So that is, of course, mass pressure. And it works really well against footmen, it works really well against militia. Water elementals are a thing though. Level 3 is not that easy to accomplish for TH if uh, Lucifer does save a few ghouls here and there and can apply the pressure because there is no healing on tier 1 for the undead, obviously. So let's see what he can do. First one is already dead, the two more rods of necromancy and the replenishment potion, which is quite nice. This arrest does work well so far, and it looks like this expansion will not finish in the next minute. 
The question is, how many ghouls can he kill? And the first one, good micro so far. Calls in for new militia, and this expansion has been slowed down for quite some time. Finally attack. So it's not a dual crypt all-in push. The thing is, once the Archmage is level 2, uh, 3, War Tremendous are level 2, this is kind of easy to defend. Plus, when there's a Guard Tower, you can't go in anymore. DK on a good way to level 3, out creeping or out leveling the Archmage now. Finally, four peasants again, but yeah, this is an. How long are we into the game? Four minutes fifty. Players' forces are under attack. That is quite a late expansion, but you have to follow it up. And I think Lucifer is focused too. Okay, he's focusing on water elementals for experience to get level three, but still five footmen here, and the peasants are allowed to live as well. Still no tech yet. Still no lumber mill. And he's exposing the base quite a bit. Graveyard coming now, it's in time. But yeah, there's no shop. There's no tower. TH playing this once again. Very greedy, very risky. Cutting corners everywhere he can. Still no defend, of course, he doesn't need it at this point. Tier 2. Plus he. And with only three ghouls, what can you really accomplish? That's what I said. He was focusing on water elementals too much. And now there's this critical mass of footmen. Are under and you can't do too much against them anymore. Except destroyers. Going for tier three immediately. Rushing the Lich too. No slaughterhouse. Of course, he has to be careful. This is not allowed to repeat with the slaughterhouse cancellation, especially on this map. It's not. Especially if you play ghouls, it's not. Because you don't have firepower, no range attack. And he gives TH the time. The player's forces are under attack. Again. Slaughterhouse coming, but this time he's in the base to defend this. And TH is trying to go for it again. This looks like a decent dish army for Lucifer at the moment. 34 supply versus 50, uh, 45. There's of course a lot more worker in there in the supply count. I like the positioning of TH to not fight on the blight if he can. Ooh, nice Nova. The arrival of a Lich makes everything easier. Micring that ghoul away, micring that... Ah, send some back in. I was just about to say two uh, saves would have been good. Next Nova, which is the main damage source at the moment against Putman. With Fiends kicking in as well. And he doesn't get that many kills. Everything is like orange-ish. But still a few Putman have been micro back. Same goes for the ghouls, though. Very good micro by both players here. A player's Blacksmith coming! Attack. And castle tech on the way. Improved lumber harvesting, no defend yet. And how bad can the undead strike now? It's only four ghouls and one fiend, if I see this correctly. Everything is sort. Didn't he get a shop? There is no shop. Oh, wow. So this is a nice breakfast for Lucifer. It's in level 3. That's another kill if he wants. Yeah, throws the coil. And there's no towers here yet. Easily sent the units in, but I don't know if he wants to, because then call to arms will be used. Interesting enough, TH not going for any kinds of surrounds against the DK to try to force a town portal. And now with the statue being there, life is so much easier. Such a quality of life improvement for the undead. What a weird thing to say, right? A little contradiction in there itself. It's a double slaughterhouse thing now. 
Okay. See, uh, things work really well so far on LR. Archmage is still level 2. No second hero yet. Interestingly, though. No Stormbolt, no Holy Light to help him. Ooh, almost a Fiend's Run, but I think he will get it against the trees or with the help of the trees. And this is not supposed to happen. I mean, you need them. But it's all about the destroyer push now. Just like on Echo, if it works, fine. The player's forces are under attack. If not, you lose the game. At the moment, there's not much uh, anti air in the army. It's just Archmage and Water Elementals. T3 is finished, Mountain King second this time, Paladin third then most likely. And the double workshop comes in again. This time it's only one base. First destroyer is up. Dispels everything of course but the Ogre Magi throws at him because sweet mana. Invo potion okay. But what can TH do against this? He has no access to Berserkers. He can lure them away and then buy the Berserker though. But only a little bit. Yeah, Pala third. Mason we upgrade three. I don't know if this destroyer push is coming too late. But there's only three towers against four destroyers. Usually this is working well. Here we go. As long as they have mana, there's no repair coming. And even if there's repair, he's gonna lose a lot of peasants. Boom. Tower's gone. And have fun with the experience now. Ooh, those sounds. All undeads love those sounds. And this push got rid of the main base. No income on this anymore at all. He cleared up it's mercenary camp. Didn't get a berserker though. Got the true Shadora, which is always nice. A player's forces are under attack. Gyros and flat cannons to fight this mass destroyers. Maybe with one or two knights at it, but there are not that many fiends, so that's alright. He can nuke them with Stormbolt Holy Light. I'm of Valor for more tankiness. Mountain King quite happy about it. Nine more uh, uh, gyrocopters. If he gets rid of tier 3 castle then there's no tanks and no chance for tanks. TP in now. How much anti-air does he have? Here we go. No panda. Ooh, that is a lot of damage. He doesn't have the mana on the destroyers anymore so he can't fight them at the moment. Just has to run away. Unfortunately, flying machines are faster. Three, four hurt destroyers. Oh my god, he's about to lose 20 supply. First one down, second one down, third one down, fourth one down. Oh boy. 20 supply gone and the Lich surrounded. Swapping over the invul. But again, it's footman raining on the ground. Gets the DK surrounded. There is a TP. But is it too late? MK dies here, but so does the DK with the town portal on him. Counter surround, worth a trade, obviously. And TH is just better. TH is just that much better. And he gets the first point for the human race. Oh my god, that was hard to watch. How did he not TP out of there? Why? He saw the TP, was greedy and wanted to go. He wanted to go for the castle. To get rid of tanks, get rid of... I don't know if he had the staff before. But the damage wasn't sufficient. The push itself was really good. But then there was no follow-up. And once the TP was in with that many gyros... That was easy for TH. And he takes the 1-0 win. 
And since this is gonna be a long day of casting, uh, I will go into a little break here. It's gonna, the next match is gonna be, uh, WFZ versus Romantic. Can he save the undeads? Or will it be Romantic to make it an easy 2 0 and bring the human race into the finals? You see it here. If WFZ equalizes, then we have the treat of 1 2 0 versus Infi. So, get ready. Grab some drinks, a snack, or a piece of pie as it's Saturday afternoon. And we'll, we'll see each other after the break with WFC versus Romantic. Four. We go on to Last Refuge once again. We ended the series here and we start the new series next. But first, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ente for the host for 60 viewers. That's very kind of you, my friend. Uh, greetings to wherever you live. I actually have no idea where you live, but Ente always a nice guy. Aren't you supposed to be working on Saturdays, man? Whatever. Romantic versus WFZ. Romantic lost yesterday against Foggy 2 to 1 with tower rushes the entire time. Like, no hero... Um, no hero lumber mill first tower rushes, which was pretty interesting, to be honest. And that was the only series that the human race has lost so far. WFZ on the other side defeated Focus 2 to 1, and that was quite a big surprise to me at least that the second best under in the world made it happen. Off we go into map number one of this encounter. This time, the odds are a lot better for Team Undead. I mean, Lucifer versus TH, it's 5 0, it's a 5 0 streak at least for TH now, so that seeding was horrible. For Team Undead. This one is better, and if he wins, we get the dream match of Infi versus 120. But first, this DK Players forces are under has to do some serious damage to upcoming expansions. Romantic against Undead. Not that impressive, I think. We have seen him though, with what was it? Four workshops tanks? <laughs> That's quite some time ago though. That was how. Yaws became a big fan of Romantic back in 2015. I think he adjusted his playstyle quite a bit against that. WFZ, quite a good destroyer push player, but he was always struggling to face TH and Infi. They were just too strong and he rarely found solutions. I talked a bit with him about the legendary WCA game on Amazonia, where he was finally able to take a map off of TH in 2014. Still the best game of that tournament by far. And yeah, he remembers it vividly as well. He needs exactly the shape of yesterday and the shape of that day to overcome his opponent. Romantic has become quite strong in recent weeks and months. Still a very, very young Warcraft player 21, I think he is. So Harass starts. Will he get the Ogre Mage Eye or is it for the Undead? Nope! The, harass, uh, the Coil is too late. So level 2 for the Archmage, can't deny that. A few more shots into the DK. This is a very nice opening for Romantic. Who of course wants to... Um, wants to return the favor. And win the game today. After his loss yesterday, which uh, brought Team Human in quite a bit of struggle, to be honest. Tier 2, 60% done. Archmage level 2.6 as well. Power build, this is 6 workers. Quite expensive. A player's forces are under attack. But DK crept a bit. Still not level 2 because he didn't get too many kills down there. I think he... what did he get? Not even a worker, right? That's one corpse. Could be a creep, though. Scout Tower is coming. Usually Romantic is kind of a slower player and a way more careful player than TH, so earlier shop, more towers earlier, um, higher levels on his heroes Please earlier. But that gives the undead more time. That's usually not what you want. But it works out for him. Ring of protection for the DK, which is not that bad as he's dropping low to 250. Already Archmage level 3. 
And the infamous footman harass is coming in. Tech is finished, so he can reproduce the acolytes if he so desires. That's why he's not going for tier 3 immediately, but prefers the slaughterhouse for statues. WFZ was the one who ca came up with the wagon siege. A player's forces are under attack. 1 to 0 then perfected it and made it work really, really well. But this is kind of the theme of the day so far. How the humans are finding a solution to delay the siege. So he's not standing here with his fiends and destroys towers or trying to kill workers. Usually that starts with early tier 2 and the lich is out. But with the initial harass being so weak and the DK so low and the fiend so low. I don't know man. Good early game for Romantic, to be honest. Last Refuge is a, usually an easy level 3. And still we're here on 2.25 on the DK. And he has to share experience with the second hero now. Which is also bad. But he gets a big item when of mana stealing. Decent. One more kill for Romantic as well. So he gets at least a little bit. And tier 3 has started. Attack. So it looks like they're going for destroyer pushes again. This meta game has devolved, I would say. They play a lot more old school. With more footmen. You see it here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 or something. Or 9 even. I think it's 8. A town is under siege. And they are very, very strong. He splits the Lich and the Fiends. There's only one Arcane Tower. Romantic, a little bit too greedy here. Not upgrading them. And that's why he can stand right in the base. A player's forces are under attack. Scout Tower's killed with one volley. Is there a town portal on him? No, not a single item. In the meantime, footmen are distracting the Death Knight. WFC was also one of the first ones to leave a destroyer home. For defending those footman pushes and water elemental pushes. Spirit Tower up. Oh, he gets a surround on the statue. That's big. He can't fight out. So the statue dies. And the second statue dies in the bottom as well. Romantic's doing a very good job of getting rid of the regeneration. And what did he really do? Didn't kill too much. Fiend is in trouble here. Right clicks on the... Oh, Nova! And it's a town portal. The shop is here in power build. Not finished yet. It's not going down. There's no mana on the lich. And he gets the fiend at the bottom. Footmen are still superior. A player's forces are under attack. DK is back with the army so he can finally coil. But Archmage should be healing up. Yes, Down there it is. You can see it. Level 2 is finished for him. Opens up a wide range of units. Breakers, casters, mortars, which are not that likely. Gyrocopters. You can play basically everything. Also mass air is possible. Finally level 3 on the DK with the footman kill. Pandas there. To get rid of the statues more quickly. But this one will survive. Shop is gone. No breakers with this. Also no Sanctum. He does have the resource. Floating at a thousand gold. Fiends are all low. Once again no coil as the Death Knight is far 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 away. Romantic trying to re uh, catch the reinforcements. Not working too well and soon there's Destroyer upgrade. We leave this open in the bottom so you can see when this matchup is shifting. But he lost way too many statues in the early. To effectively do that Destroyer push now. Only defending with his DK and the ghouls. Does take time, but at least he's defending it well. He's not losing acolytes, he's not losing structures. In the meantime, forces repair. Trying to go for the crypt, it's 
destroyer upgrade finishing right now. I wonder if he will morph it instantly because then he has no mana and he has no regen anymore. I don't think it's that necessary. Tower is still up. Town portal out now. Ooh, three footmen and the panda not portaling with them. Ah, it was just a staff. I see. Very scrappy game so far. No real decision has been made, but it all comes down to how well WFC can punish this now. With destroyers to be in the air soon. He finally gets rid of the tower, but there's four guard towers with the 1 0 upgrade. Or zero one 1 upgrade, but there's no attack upgrade, so with the first masonry upgrade. But he's in range, Statue's healing against it, he killed some workers, diminishes the income with five fiends, it's very easy to take them out with the a few volleys. Putmin are streaming in though, he needs a coil on this one, doesn't have Burrow as it seems, gets rid of the statue again, and the Breath of Fire finishes this. Destroyer down to 100, needs a coil too. But the fights seem to be better from Romantic so far. We do have breakers now as the shop is back and the sanctums are up. And even though he had a lot of fiend shots, Expo is still running. And in the base, tier 3, blacksmith coming now and only one sanctum casters. Doesn't want to invest too much. On the other side, no second slaughterhouse, no worm transition, nothing. And that's still level 1 is of course a very interesting choice. If you know that a siege is coming, but we seem to be sure that he will get the level 3 sooner or later. Nice focusing. Lizard again very early on. And this is the normal human defense that we see recently. That Infi came up with due to GCS in August. And it's annoying because to get priests here, your Archmage will always be healed. With this level 2 Lich, you can't really nuke him that bad. He is squishy, yeah, but there are potions, of course. So getting rid of the shop is key. You get rid of clarities, heal scrolls, and potions. Forces are just in the base, no wagons or anything. Silence helps a little. Finally, the undead has a bit of disable. Not committing to the repair just yet, interestingly, even though he has a lot of resources. How many coils are remaining? That's four. Okay, and here comes the wagon. Damage intensifies with the ground attack to kill the workers as well, if they're down there. Actually, isn't he doing it? No, he's not. Paladin is coming in. And usually the meat wagon should be here somewhere. But the blizzard is only finding the fiends, but they do a very good job with the blizzard. And as the spellbreaker number heightens up, it's getting harder and harder by the minute for WFC to do this here. Oh, nice coil Nova Panda dead. There's no chance. It's just a level 1. one. But there was no staff. There was a potion, but... In the end, it doesn't matter. Fine. Oh, he has disease cloud now. And he infects the workers with a smelly cloud. And nice round. That's not that easy to do with fiends, man. Double kill for WFZ. Level 4 and 3. And he does have a good damage. Mass repair from... Romantic the entire time. But this is not supposed to be that way. He wants additional gold from the expansion and not uh, lose gold all the time to keep it up. And it's just a matter of time where all the workers will be hurt and then have fun with the Nova. Circle of Nobility, bigger heal potion, transitioning into knights now. 
And we'll watch Rain coming, Paladin coming back. back, Panda is back. And there is the mention Nova, gets a double kill and a triple kill. And of course the less repair, the more likely it is to cancel it. Will he right click or will he fight? 57 supply for Romantic, 57 for WFZ as well. The win would be so important, one of the better undead maps we have. It's only two knights though. It's 1-0 attack upgrade on the lit on the fiends. And level 2 on the Dark Ranger. This is nice because you get skeletons from it, especially if you kill the workers. Then eat the skeletons, get more mana. So far we haven't seen too many blizzards. And the paladin again dead. What a dieback. He was back for like 20 seconds. Maybe he feels cozy in the altar. It's a little warmer than on the rough battlefields. Even had a repair acolyte for statues, which I like. He's not able to break this pendulum, but look at the corpses everywhere. And the levels 4.3, Lich is 3, Dark Ranger 2.3, and the other side still 4 1 1. And that is not what you want, obviously. Another Nova, another double kill, and now there's not too much repair anymore. Disease Cloud is doing its job against the regen. Heal potion on the panda side, who was severely hurt with this. Lich spit out of position. Doesn't have a Nova, just his right clicks. There's one more coil, and the expansion is down. With the first destroyer in the air and the abomination coming. This looks really good, and he, as the expansion is broken, so is Romantic and WFZ taking the lead in game number two. About to equalize for the Scourge. But, that was a good human map. And that was a good play by WFC. Once again, he didn't do too much in the early. But didn't lose anything. And the defense of the footman push, we saw in the match of TH versus Lucifer, how good they can be. How effective you, effectively you can trade with footmen against uh, structures, acolytes, everything. So, he was there when the push hit, when the footman approached his base. And even though it was just a DK and skeletons, this was so helpful. Split the fiends and statues and lich apart from it to harass a bit, keep the shop down, try to annoy some workers. Good performance. Good performance. Does anyone know what happened to Jan and Mark from Giga back in the day? Uh, Mark Hoffmann is working at Gründerszene.de or .de which is a page that covers startups, so he, he takes care of a lot of startups. Jan Dominikus is working at eSport. Is he working for Mouse Sports again as a PR guy? I got him on Twitter. Let me check. Jan Dominikus was Twitter. Glory days of German Warcraft, it was, with those two. Okay, game is coming. Echo Alts it is. Yeah, Jan is working at SK Gaming at Mouse Sports. As a PR guy, I think. Is Orker still in the scene? Nope. My favorite caster back then, Orkish. He was so funny. Yeah. So next map is Echo Alt, which is again very, very hard to play. One of the best human maps we have. 
So we have seen Lucifer's approach of playing this with a counter expansion. I wonder if WFZ does the same. Where's Remo? I don't know. Haven't heard from him this week. So I guess he's taking time off or something. As you know... Sometimes... Uh, he has those days. So no, it's gonna be solo cast today for Race War and then I will join Massimo later in the stream. For MoCup 100. Orcs get owned by Banshees these days. Yes, that is true. I expected a bigger backlash from my tweet yesterday where I pointed out how Orc is not greater undeads anymore. <laughs> oh, we have 1,307 viewers. That's nice. That's my birthday, basically. So I like that number a lot. And the game starts! I thought I had a bug there for a second, but no. Those join bugs are, seem to be a thing of the past. In the beginning we had them a lot, where games wouldn't start. And even with a full room, with like 12 streamers for this event, no bugs happening. I mean, yesterday we had the thing that both players were named the same. That's about it. WFZ only f less than 50% against human. That surprises me a lot. Because usually he does good against them. Hmm. Interesting. We do have a new sub that is Cranka. For s oh, it's not new. It's six month resub. What should I say? Six nice month. Uh, keep your work on. And as always, 420 blaze. <laughs> Much less than three for you guys. Keep it on. Thank you very much, Cranka. And same for Krobos. Who has subscribed for the first time. As you know, subscriptions are 50% off. We still get the whole deal. So if you want to sub and support this channel, now is the time for you. But now is the time for Romantic versus WFZ match number two. The Undead is leading 1-0 and is about to equalize for the Scourge. As TH took the win over Lucifer with 2-0. And then, if we go to map 3, we have Infi versus 120, and that is what everybody is dreaming of. That's what uh, wet Warcraft dreams are made of. <laughs> so, Echo Owls again. Romantic starting in the upper left with a late altar, fast racks. Uh, this is a neutral hero build. What the hell? A player's force Romantic was surprising us yesterday with his lumber mill first strategies. He does have the supply, he could go for a hero, but he's not doing it. He's waiting for something. What is it? Beastmaster. With Bash Bear first. Romantic seems to be in love with the Bash Bear. But what is this supposed to be? What is the reason behind this? I mean, normal damage cool against back. fiends, obviously. Is it, or is it a ghoul build? No, it's a fiend build. With a fast attack. So early echo harass? Uh, I'm a little confused, but we'll see how that works. Not going for Quill Beast is indeed interesting. Bash Bear is quite tanky, but if three ghouls are focusing it, that doesn't do much. Timing is nice as the attack has just started, so WFC has to evacuate all the acolytes, trying to save it. Here comes the coil, saves the next uh, uh, Bash Bear comes in. And I don't think he got the experience from the last one, right? 
Got nice defense by WFZ. Keeping the Beastmaster low. One Acolyte kill, finally. So the humans might have figured out that <laughs> these harasses work fine and the so Romantic takes it to the next level and just does it immediately. <laughs> Which is quite nice. Level 2, finally, for the Unholy Aura. More and more Ghouls. Gets another kill here. Oh, the Coil arrives too late. TP out now, and that was some damage. But since there was... One Acolyte too much prior. He won't lose that much gold. He will lose a lot of time, though. But what's the Beastmaster worth in the later stages? There's no t uh, no expansion. And we are quite a few minutes into the game. What is it? Four minutes into the game. No expansion yet for the human. That is hard. Yeah, Bash Bear first. Maybe just not the best choice. Oh, that lightning shield hurts. It has to dispel it. Talisman of Evasion, decent, but definitely not what we want. And now WFZ has an, should have an easy time. On paper. But we haven't seen this work, I guess. Maybe it just becomes super strong later as well, but I don't see it. Good block for the skeleton, good damage on the Beastmaster as well. I'm pretty sure there's no shop. Because he didn't use a scroll before. Maybe he built it when he was... Oh, 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 this is a trap, man! Still gets out, though. Well done. Level 2.5... Well, 2.4 already. 2.6 here. Still no attack. There is a shop. Okay, so he built it during the creep. Which is quite nice. But there is tier 2 already. How much gold did he lose? 10,900... 300... Okay, 600 gold. With the acolyte that he had to rebuild. But for a 600 gold harass, you shouldn't have to go for a Beastmaster. That works with water elementals as well. Maybe he just wants to do a little fun since this is a fun event. But now it's level 3 for the Beastmaster. We haven't seen a Hawk or a Quill Beast. So he's just waiting for the Bash Bear, which is a lot stronger now. And he actually has Bash now. Before on level 5, he becomes the Blink Bear. Blink Bash Bear, BBB, or BB3. Still no text, still no expo. Ooh, Mass Mercs. Finally it comes. But this destroyer push will just wreck. It's a double slaughterhouse push. Super old school. But I mean, against summons. The best thing you can go for. WFC wants to end this as quick as possible, and with uh, with summons, this is destroyers. DK harassing a little further, but that's about it. Hoping for a bass. Oh, he misses. <laughs> He sees the double slaughterhouse now, as he expires. Lumber mill only coming in now, so the towers will be very late as well. I hope he can surprise me and somehow show me that this Beastmaster is a good idea. But apart from the Bash Bear being one of the coolest things in the game, I don't see the reason and the value yet. Mass statues, tier 3 almost done, this will line up, and then he gets destroyer upgrade, and then he pushes. Very decent creeping here, so not going too far out of the map, just getting a little bit of experience, which won't, ha won't help him with level 3 though. Only one fiend, and he's going for the Tomb of Relics. Again, the Achilles heal for the undead. If you stop, or if you get rid of the shop, then you stop statue production, and you stop destroyers. So that's all he does now, to buy more time for his own towers, for his own expansion to work, and then the tech of course. That was pretty good, mercenary's a little late, I think he forgot the second control group or something. 
Or did they get something here? No. Nice call to save it. And this, of course, changes everything. This upgrade. One ghoul dead. Tra trades it for a footman. He's far away from level 4. So the hawk won't help. Two bears. A rare sight. And good damage, man. Here comes the bash. And he will get that feat most likely. Yes, good one. And WFZ only 31 supply. He does have the first destroyer now. Dispels it immediately. And there's more destroyers coming. I mean, he doesn't have ghouls anymore, right? He did lose quite a bit. Two, ah, three ghouls. Okay, he has three ghouls for the lumber. That's all right. But no fiend anymore. Can't web. Towers are coming. Oh, this is going to be close. I mean, he does have two towers, but it's only... Even if they finish, it's only going to be five. It's going to be three destroyers. Oh, the... Timing is everything here. So those two will finish. Can Romantic distract him? I don't think so, man. WFZ super straightforward with the Panda second. Not even going for a ledge. Destroyer number two. Destroyer number three. And off we go. We have two towers. Will these one finish? Nice breath of fire, mass repair, but also mass damage. There is a heal scroll. Like, oh, he used the heal scroll before. He's switching the focus, giving the workers more time to repair. And so far, he can't break the towers, and they finish! And the timing is just a little bit too late, as it seems. Losing a lot of HP on those destroyers. This was supposed to work better. Didn't lose one. That's almost nice. Oh, destroys now, but he needs a lot of coils against this. He doesn't have mana anymore. Tier 2, only now, 10 minutes into the game, trying to harass with the bear again, which works pretty damn good. But the question is, how much damage can he do here? And the four towers prevail. If he attacks five seconds earlier, or like a little earlier, then this is this is game. He breaks it, he kills the towers, it's game. But no, he was distracted in the middle a bit. And that's what happens. Attack would be nice for the Lich, but there is no Lich. Not going for it either. Oh, the bear got rid of the stack of the uh, shop again. Oh, Romantic is playing this so smart. I like it. And more towers. This expo is safe. As safe as it gets. He doesn't forget about the main base either. So even though everything was very late. He's making it work. The problem is though, what can the Beastmaster do? Sock played it before on maps like Turtle Rock, where it worked from time to time, and that's what got him the nickname King Cancer. With skele uh, Summon Harass and Tanks, or Gyrocopter Lane. But with the Panda second, I think Tanks and Gyrocopters both not that great. Could be Air. As it has, uh, the air units have more HP, and that's why they are better against the panda. Creeping up on the way to level 5. But doesn't get it. Destroys it here, level 3. Two claws already. I hope he's gonna go for Lich third. He's gonna be so strong. Tomb of Relics is finally back, and he can go for more statues. He has nothing else in the army but statues or destroyers. But it's too late for that. He really wants a fast level 5 for Blink. He does have all the time in the world at the moment. Beast, decent, but close to five after this. Five destroyers. 
No necro. Uh, no, no wagon. Go on him. He gets rid of a bunch of towers. But is it enough? Questionable. Beastmaster is coming in. Mm, still not level 5. Is he actually able to hold this? Only one masonry upgrade. That might have been the mistake. Th that he didn't go for masonry too. After his skill to keep. Or, or tech to keep. And counter expansion behind this. He can attack it pretty quickly with a bash bear. And I like since this Beastmaster build is designed for the bear, I like how he's not going for fiends. But I think the summons are pretty much worthless now. Level 3 on the Panda, Breath of Fire, and that's a big support in killing those uh, guard towers. Especially now that the destroyers have no mana anymore. The Panda has to carry quite a bit, gets a double kill. Beastmaster super low. The Berserker scouts have a nice reaction by WC, even pulling the Acolyte to attack this. The Berserker has to go. But no mana. Triple kill again. This Panda was a really good choice. WFC likes to mix it up, second hero wise. I mean, most of the time it's a Lich. But we have seen... Dark Rangers, Pandas now. Now guy. As well. And since he's out of range now, he can attack that town hall. And again... Signature WFZ move. Splitting destroyers away from the rest of the army. This is actually close, he has to cancel it. He stabs home. Wasn't enough, was still well done though. So he's tier 3. And Gyrocopters, Ooh, I don't know if that's a solid choice against Mass Destroyers and a Panda, who's close to 4, then, yeah, who is 4 now, then going for Mass Gyros, I mean, they will all be burned and melted. But he lacks damage, and he needs a... Uh, Players forces are under Takes attack. a lot of time. Last time the gyrocopters were Lucifer's demise against TH. But WFZ with five destroyers now. And more to come, I think. 800 gold for him. Good thing for Romantic to kill the expansion over and over. But he can't find level 5. That's where the bear gets really out of control. Miss, 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 miss. <laughs> Drunken Brawler, man. Good skill. Boom. Down it goes. Romantic once again without double income. And he is facing old school five destroyers. And the Beastmaster is running around like a hatless chicken. Has no clue what to do. Now he's going for web. That, of course, diminishes the army of gyros as he can kite them. It will take some time. We, does, we, uh, we do have Flag Cannon upgrade ready, now so this is area of effect. But this is 33 attack. supply of only gyros. Lich second. A little bit of scouting to be done here. We haven't seen a Hawk nor a Cool Beast, right? So we don't know what it is. You know what it is? Using militia to creep at like 17 minutes into the game is quite funny. Very small for me. This panda is going to be key against them. He starts the second control group of gyros though. 39 supply. Can he can support it on one base if he's not going for knights or anything at the same time. 70 supply, getting ready for 80 supply, and liches out. 5dk as well. And super close to 5 panda. One more creep and he got it. And then level 3. Are under Ay, yeah, yeah, this will hurt. Oh. 
Oh, he does have a lot of mana. He wants one kill. Cutting that uh, HP in half. But the cooldown is not that high. Gets two destroyers, three destroyers though. Finally level five on the Beastmaster. And this fight is so good. What is the Panda doing? He's trying to get a better position. There we go. Mass damage at level five finally. So the next Breath of Fire will hurt. But he lost so many destroyers. It's unbelievable. Where's the next breath? Nice positioning from Romantic. These gyros are actually saving him the game. Down from 67 supply to 43. And not too many resources here for WFZ to make up for this. Town portal back. Stampede! He got level 6 from this. Breath of Fire, Nova. Is it enough? Is it enough? Oof, barely. Barely, barely, barely. Stampede was rocking through this. Lots of damage here against the Ziggurats, but apart from that, not too much. Haunted Goldman coming up again. He needs that second expansion. Romantic holding on. What a crazy game this is. We see flying machine bombs. But this was the last fight with the Panda level 4. And now it's level 5. And he does have a hell of a lot of mana. Should definitely swap over. Oh boy. Level 3 bear coming in. But massive amount of damage against the Beastmaster again. 1200 HP, yes. So the flying machines can attack ground now, which is nice to take out statues. Expansion is 70% done, but Beastmaster with the staff. Yeah, that's usually working seat. well. So he's moving into a ground army that renders all the flying machines basically useless. Except for harassing, obviously. But then he can go into a few knights. Problem still is no Archmage, no MK, no Paladin. Which is usually in the end what makes the humans so stressful. But yeah, flying machine bombs. It's not much damage, but it's a lot of units. And the Bash Bear tanking everything. We see a Quilby's level 2 with Bloodlust. Tower gone. He lost a few flying machines, but I think that's absolutely okay. Got rid of all the towers though, so second expansion attempt not working at all. The panda's coming in. Still good micro by romantic, moving them out of the way. 34 supply only, man. And how long it takes to get rid of the bash bear? Takes forever. One breath of fire again, but it really worked. Takes out the blacksmith. Uses a lot of time on that. I think we're just waiting for this one breath of fire that fries all the gyros. And then what can he do? WFC back at 50 supply, but Bash Bear going for the Acolytes. There's no way to defend this from this position. He can't go back, I and mean, he can go back, but it takes forever. Flying machines! They are dismantling this in like seconds. Step out. Expo cancelled for the second time. Well, well, well. Ooh, that was close. Didn't expect the panda there. Level 5.3. And this fiend working overtime. Kills the blacksmith. How much gold is remaining? 1,500. Almost no gold anymore here. Tanks are coming. First two are already there. No upgrades though. But it's quite easy to react to this as he has two slaughterhouses. A massive amount of flying machines. Double level 5. Flying machines are of course scouting this. And the main gold mine is empty. So he has to get this expo up. This might be his last chance. So I think he's going to distract here with Stampede. He has a lot of mana and there's nothing really 
WFC can do except walking north with the army to defend this and then flying machines come into the haunted gold mine again. Take some time. Long distance mining? He does have the gold for it. For the town hall. I wonder why he's not using it. So it splits the tanks in two groups? Or will they reunite? Ah, they will reunite, okay. Army is still there. Still buying time. It's only three, two fiends. No destroyers, but heroes. And off we go. He was waiting. Everything is in position for a great, great attack by Romantic. He's attacking everywhere at the same time. Flying machines are coming. Stampede is rattling through. Panda comes in with a massive breath, though. Diminishing the damage by quite a bit, but he can't disable the Stampede. And the ziggurats are falling everywhere. So in the meantime, he's attacking down south, going with the tanks against the Haunted Goldmine, which will most likely fall as well. Very well executed. He's trying to go for this, and he kills him! Level 6! Beastmaster is dead, and without that, WFC wins it, taking it 2-0, man. What a defense in the end, pulling all the right strings. Only the panda was enough to kill the gyrocopters. The panda and the ghouls were enough to kill the Beastmaster, overstaying the welcome there, and it was a good plan by Romantic to execute it that way, but WFC had the answer, and taking it 2-0, 4-1 now in race war he is, with only one lost map against Focus, so one of the reasons why Undead is so successful so far is WFC, and now we go to map, uh, to game 3, where we expected, or this is supposed to be, the big highlight of this clan war. It's going to be the decision who's going into the winner bracket final. And the guys who decide that are Infi and 120. GCS rematch. Coming up in a bit, we go into a small commercial break. And then we'll be back here at Back to Warcraft with Race War 2017. <clears throat> Once again, we have to cut this break short as the game is already starting. This is the decision in the winner bracket final of Race War 2017. It's Team Human versus Team Undead and the two juggernauts of each team. The captains are playing it out for their respective races. Infi versus 1-2-0. You saw what happened before if you tune in late. Lucifer was defeated by TH once again with a 2-0. Then WFZ stroke back against Romantic 2-0. And now GCS rematch. Hoip! Uh, that. Here they are. The last big battle between the two was NSL group stage, where it was about elimination in the lower bracket, a final in their respective groups. Their Infi 1 eliminating 1 2 0 from the highest prize pool tournament we have in the scene currently. But of course, the big win was 1 2 0, where he came from the lower bracket at GCS Summer 2017. And then defeated Infi in an epic, epic final that featured the Death Knight Ultimate. What a game this was. Both masters of their race. Oops, Allah, didn't want to do that yet. Uh, both masters of their race. Infi, the best human at the moment. Top three of the Back to Warcraft ELO ranking for the very first time in his career, or since the invention of the, the ELO ranking. 1 to 0. Still the second best player in the world. Isn't that. Oh, yes, it's not updated for some reason. So one to zero dropped out of the top three is now fourth, I think, since Infi kicked him out after Happy and Lin, who lead this ranking. But that's enough for the talks, as we want action, and those two guarantee action. Off we go. Map number one, this is still a best of three. This is still Race War 2017. And now the colors are fine as well. Mountain King first on Infi's side. Haven't seen that in a while. But Stormbolt, I see Chechi already uh, raging about the Stormbolt in chat. He was prepared for it, he said, for the wines that are coming in. By the way, we do have a few new subs here. Kojak and Gord versus Keith. Half a year for that guy already, man. Thank you for the support. I hope you enjoy your content here. But yeah, it's about the Let game now. Are under attack. On LR? You can't expand fast, you can't creep well to level 3 if you do it correctly. And it's a very aggressive 1 to 0. Is it a ghoul build? No, it's a fiend build. Tech started yet, very fast tech. So this harass is nice if he steals some HP. 
and gets the MK away. Here's the first steal on that side. Both equally close to level 2 here. But it's of course about the Ogre Magi. Whoever gets the Ogre Magi gets a guaranteed level 2. And it's, it's the Storm Ball that secures the kill and the experience and the item for Infi. I still don't know what happened to him. I still don't know what flipped the switch so hard that he comes out of the slump that he was in. I mean, he was still one of the best players in the world. He was still getting decent results. But it was not the dominating Infi of 2014 and earlier. It was just one of those guys. But now he's back in one of the best shapes in his life. 1 to 0. Oh, gets surrounded here. That's big. He can't fight out. This has to be a town portal bash kicking in. But yeah, TP out there without doing too much. Oh, actually, gets a lot of passant kills. But it's 6 footmen already. And Infi's surrounding skills are... Like, you have to be afraid of what's to come. Especially with the Mountain King where surrounding is so easy and without healing. He was lucky to get a Ritu potion. So that helps him a lot now. But this is all time for the Mountain King. The base is exposed. There's only one scout tower with a nice sim city here. Expansion, nothing yet. And with only three workers, this will take some time. New rods of necromancy bought at the shop. A new skeleton summoned from the corpse. But... Oh, there's no storm ball. Of course, the lack of brilliance aura is definitely visible here now. Ghouls are coming in again for the support. And he's trying to get the worker kills. Gets one. Nice coil. But it just prolongs the life a little bit. Nice stutter stepping here from time to time. But he loses all the ghouls that he brought, uh, brings in. Except this one there. Good leveling for the Mountain King. Which is close to level 3 for him now. Level 2.5 on the Death Knight. And again. All peasants dead. So he has to call new ones. And every time you call Militia. That takes away or subtracts from your lumber income. Which will then delay the tech. And we saw very early on in that game. That 1 to zero's tech was crazy fast. And he goes for tier 3 immediately. More ghouls. Not a single fiend yet. Despite uh, the graveyard build. He was focusing on ghouls. As he saw that there's no archmage. Which can kill ghouls very quickly. He said it's alright. Then I will call my little buddies. Not the spiders. Mountain King is 3 though, and that makes the Storm Bolt a lot better. More stun, more damage, and definitely scarier for upcoming fiends, but there is none yet. Focuses on ghouls. So not a single tower up, starting with an arcane. He's going for the lumber mill now. Also no shop to heal stuff. But the MK is coming in, looking for the insta gibbs. Oh, but nice defense. Nice defense. Traps him there, forces the step of teleportation. Immediately, without dealing damage. Oh, nicely done. He's at the expansion, goes for the Acolytes. But he's trapped down there, maybe resulting in the Town Portal. But this is tier 3 tech, so that will take a while. And every single Acolyte that dies will be gone for quite a long time. And he gets the next one. Nice around. This has to be a Town Portal now, but was it worth it? Hell yeah, it was. Killing three Echoes here. We will compare the gold mines. After the tech is finished and he replaced them to see how much damage it actually did. The arcane tower is up, so skeleton's not efficient anymore. But you see that the shop is not there yet, so no region scrolls. And 1 to 0 knows this, of course. He scouted it with skeletons. Very good scouting today. Um, sometimes he's maybe a little lazy and doesn't do it that much. And I wasn't too impressed with 1 to 0 lately compared to his. Unhuman performances that he has shown this year already. But today seems to be a good day. Good coil timings. In general, good timings. Again, the shop is not up. And there's a lot of hurt footmen here. Kills one. Stormbolt surround. No TP! Oh no! Can he fight out? There's mass units here. He called to arms to secure this kill on the DK. Oh boy, this is bad. And now it's cleaning time. No TP, no staff. Yeah, you have to know it. I mean, he gets the shop, so everything stays hurt. That is hurt right now. There's no priests. There's no region scroll. 
Actually, it's a nice evacuation with the ghouls. You're not losing too many, but the DK loss. He's getting him back from the altar, so Lich will be delayed a lot. This is a very unusual undead versus human. No Fiend Siege. No early tier 2 Lich aggression. But there's a statue, so definitely destroyers. And the destroyer timing will be strong. Infi, pretty unusual for him not going for too many towers. He's building a few now, but he was called uh, like the sixth race, the tower race, because he built so many of them back in the day in 2009-ish, where he had his strongest phase with 2014 together. But of course the game changed a lot and mass towers is not that effective anymore as it once was. So I think everything has been replaced. 7,200 gold, 8,000 gold. 800 gold difference from this harass in the midst of tier 3. A player's forces are under attack. That's a lot. And that really hurt him. But on the other side, I think the Death Knight kill was even better. Level 4 MK. And it's easy to get level 5 here. But it's still not tech, right? Wow, only now teching? How far are we in this game? I have to check. O almost 10 minutes. Yeah, I said before, calling all the militia decreases your lumber income. And that's the late tech. So, how fast can he go for the destroyers? Will it be in time? We saw the timing of WFZ was a, a little bit too late. Attack. On the expansion on Echo Isles. And I think this will be too late as well. Yeah, three towers, four towers here. Yeah. And we should be safe. Because it's not double slaughterhouse, so he can't produce that fast. Has only two statues, a few of them he needs for healing and regen. So he can't morph them all. Should be a call kill, as he will. Mountain King with boots and staff on the way to harass again. Second lumber mill to wall this off. A player's forces are under attack. No second hero yet, obviously, as he's not tier two. But also the undead plays a DK solo. Ah, finally there's a lich that helps all corruption in this potion. And you know what that means. Going back actually. Invis potion lasts basically forever. So he's just waiting for the Ogre Magi and creeping at the top at the same time as you can see on the minimap. I want to stay here though. There's no shop, there's no reveal. Stormbolt, big mana! Oh, what a nice drop for the Mountain King. Was just waiting for it. The best drop, I think. Getting close to five. Stealing stuff for the undead with only four footmen. And get some damage done here. Both players with a very, very good game. Level 1 Nova. Meh. 3, 4, 6 towers there. 6 towers, 7 towers in the base. And a very late defend upgrade. Attack. Interestingly. So, MK climbing onto level 5. Lich lacks levels, DK lacks levels. I mean, the Mountain King is close to 5, DK is only now close to 4. Ooh, Staff is on cooldown, this is a town portal. Blocks him. Can get one more kill. Oh, no TP, was too greedy! And he loses the first hero as well. Oh, 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 oh. 1 2 0, returning the favor. His DK was killed before thanks to Bash and Stormbolt. But here comes Coil Nova to make up for that. And that is, of course, a brilliant scenario. How much gold does he have? 800. He could get him back from the tavern. A player's force and I think that's attack. what he's doing since the Altar of Kings is still empty. Blood Mage second. We saw that much. 
banish bolt. A hell of a combo. First thing that the blood mage does is go to the tavern and drink some beer, which is a uh, <laughs> interesting thing to do. Get, handing over mana, so Stormbolt is very close, which is a bit far away, but definitely an opportunity to kill the blood mage here. There is no staff or anything. He's going for the mountain king again, but he's in this, so no shade or anything. Tier three is coming, almost done, and then paladin third. Can't allow this Ogre Mage to die again. Uses Coral Nova and Wind of the Wind was not the item there. What was it? Again a big mana? Must have been the case. Second big mana. Since the Wind of the Wind can only be found at the laboratory that he did earlier. Tier 3 finished. In a bit we see Breakers, so Infi doesn't feel too comfortable as he's transitioning into Breakers at least for a bit before they get replaced by Knights. Oh, Rune Bracers. Infi's items are great. They're just great. Get so much time. A town is under the expansion is paying off big time. He finds a good timing to kill the workshops though. And smartly going for the peasants first so they can't finish. And they won't finish. He just has to kill them now. So they can't be continued. Why is he not cancelling them? He's just buying a little bit of time. But if he cancels them he buys even more time. Three destroyers are never enough to break this. Or do they have upgrades? No they don't. First tower down. How long can he do this? Not too much longer. He keeps the workshops alive. Oh, nice item, man. Cloak of Flames for the MK. He's level 5 now. Leaves the workshops for a few towers. I don't know if that was worth it. He could have delayed the gyrocopters for a minute or so. And now they're coming with flag cannons, and they're so quick to produce. There's no panda third or second. Nice Nova though. No area of effect from the destroyers anymore. A little bit of more creeping, level 2.6 here. But yeah, destroyers are out of the fight. Too hurt, have to be healed up. But it is level 5 TK. You've got a mana stone somewhere. Okay, harass again. There is a lot of space in this base, so that suits the human a bit. A town is under siege. And Paladin's third, so Banish, Bolt, Holy Light. The strongest nuke in the game is online. At the moment he's still a little weak, thanks to the one uh, level one Holy Light only, but it's just a matter of time. Sends the destroyers back. To deal with it, of course, not that great as if it was an Archmage where he can dispel uh, stuff. But he goes for the Blood Mage, there's an Invo Potion, there's a TP. Can't do too much here. Invo Potion first. He's actually going for the Haunted Gold Mine. Just with heroes, insta giving all the Acolytes. That was so obvious. Did he just lose his town? Oh my god. Oh my god. Infi, what are you doing? Blood Mage dead, Paladin dead, no TP anymore, Haunted Goldmine stays alive. There's two destroyers against five gyros, but he can't take that fight with that few gyros. This is very unusual for Infi to make such a massive mistake. And he lost a lot of units there at the expo, only now mining again. Get the Blood Mage back or the Paladin, or is he reviving them both here? Oh, he is. Now he can fight the, gy uh, the destroyers again. What if they are retreating here? Of course, he has to attack. 
He has to do some damage. There's 900 gold for Infi. 300 only for him. 50 versus 42. A very, very close game once again. As these games tend to be a little longer. Level 2, so the Paladin is basically unkillable now. And he got him back from the tavern. Ring of Protection. Nice. Doesn't get rid of the shop. Doesn't get rid of the workshops. I don't know why he's not finishing this. Again. Staffing out again. Ooh, Dark Ranger third for the silence. One destroyer seems to be dead or in the base. I'm not too sure. Infi again with the mistake and sacrificing a few gyros there for a little damage. Level 3 Blood Mage inbound. This expansion is so crippled. A town is a under forces are under attack. So transition into knights is coming. Level three is guaranteed here. And most likely a good item. He can't get the Overlord. Oh, he got it! Uh, did he get the item? Yes, Endurance Aura. So nice to get additional movement speed, man. Infi giving up this spot. Nice time from 1 to 0 to get back in this. And attack speed is always nice for the Lich. And movement speed plus the Unholy Aura. They, This army is so fast now. A player's forces are under attack. Sorry, here's your pit. Additional scouting. Man, what a game. How much gold is there? 650. But 5, 3, 2 heroes for the human. 5, 4, 1. 5, 5 is gonna be the gold standard, of course. Good bone chimes. Nah. As he has no melee units. 4,000 only here. He's not expanding for the second time. That would be like a TH thing to do, but Infi at the moment not in a position to go for it. Only 160 gold remaining. What did he invest into? Only gyros. Nothing else, right? Yeah, knights, of course. Knights are expensive. One to zero with a thousand gold. Not breaking upkeep yet. When of the Wind has been used incredibly well in recent days. Today, not that good, I think. Still nine gyros there. He's trying to break this again, and he does! Three destroyers, got tower down in a heartbeat. Three masonry upgrades, he still doesn't stand a chance. No one to the workers. Oh, banish too late. Man, banish later than the bolt. That was a mistake by Infi. He's not playing his absolute best. With tiny little mistakes like them. Oh, imagine a breath of fire now. But he can't go for it anymore since he was focusing on disabling the heroes with silence. But this is Infi's only income. And thanks to the harass, 1 to 0 is still mining, still banking. And he's distracting him so much with 50 food. Infi constantly loses gold thanks to uh, the upkeep, so he's paying taxes for even those three workers. It's a three, right? I think so. Maybe four, but he's not rebuilding anything of it. And it's not expanding for the second time. This looks very good for 1-2-0. But the army of Infi is, of course, scary squishes through this round. But the AoE of the Gyrocopters is scary. For Infi, it's almost make or break. Lashifuge is one of the undead maps, though. So he could afford a loss. He's making it quite close here. Someone in the Dark Ranger again. He doesn't want that silence. And whoa, those gyros, man. MVP of the humans today. Getting rid of two destroyers at the same time. And this third one will not survive at all. He's banking too much. One to zero was too greedy, as it seems. I don't think we have... Uh, 
the bombs, so he can't attack anything anymore with the flying machines. But even the ground army is still good with two knights, two breakers, three breakers. A bombs now. Nice block from the Mountain King, who's 5.5, 5.5 on the DK as well. You can't nuke that one. It's impossible with the Rune Bracers. 33 supply only. He lost so much. There was 15 supply destroyers that are gone now. And he realized, okay, I got rid of your mightiest weapon destroyers. I will expand. He does have the gold. He's there. And Acolyte is scouting, but what can he do? Or she? I don't know. Or both? Or nothing? Do we know? Acolytes are male. I think they are. The working man. Of the undead. They sound very... Very male. But we don't know. More creeping to be done. Level 5 Lich would be an answer for Coil Nova 3. But he can't go into air units anymore. He lost the air battle. There's too many gyros TPing out now. He's oh, what an insta gib! Holy cow, that focus on the Lich. A blink of an eye and he was gone. Death Knight was town portaling so he couldn't get a coil out. And there you saw how mighty Banish Bold Holy Light is. Especially with everything on level 322. Lich is back though. He can't afford to have that hero benched with the Orb of Corruption. He cannot afford it. But yeah, Lich just exploding and Infi is towering up. This looks good for him. This looks really good for him. So he's trying to get Fiend's A-bombs out, but also he has no income anymore. I think he could be happy if he goes up to 50 supply, but there's four knights, three breakers. A hero kill must be the solution, but how? With Holy Light, he can spam it. I mean, there's no Archmage, there's no Brilliance Aura. He's trying to get the Mountain King killed, but yeah, Silence a little too late. And Infi is mining and mining and mining and mining. From two gold mines again. Holy Light. That was the last Holy Light, though. Surround on the A bomb. Well done. He needs that kill somehow. If he can get the kill, everything is over. Ooh, no banish. And he gets the kill. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He's losing the MK. What is going on? The nuke is gone. He is going for the surround of the Lich, but fails again. Is there a coil? Is there a coil? No, there's not. Banish Holy Light, not enough! And now he can't attack it anymore. Needs another Holy Light, but he can't spam it since the mana is gone for him as well. Here comes the coil, heals up to entirety. And now the DK is thrown. What an ending to this game is this. Invo Potion being popped. Can he fight through? There is the Divine Shield. And can he kill the Knight? Then he's safe, but I don't think so. I do not think so. Oh, actually he gets away. Gets a level up as... Well, I think, no he didn't, but he, where's the shop? He needs the potion! He gets the potion! Unbelievable skill by 1-2-0 again. But can he fight through? Infi is pushing forward, even without his heroes, he's trying to get the Paladin out, but it's not possible! Coil arrives last second! This is Warcraft at its absolute best, but 1-2-0's forces, they are dwindling. Infi overtowering him, but is he overstaying his welcome against all the towers that he has? It's an unbelievable game. The DK is dry. Can he get a potion? A mana potion. Doesn't have the gold for it. Lich is in trouble. DK is in trouble. He's focusing him. They silence though. Can he get a kill? Town portal out. What a fight this was. Man. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> that was both sides. Like no gifts at all. Except that, like the Mountain King maybe. But what can 1 to 0 do? He has to all in somehow, but with what? But with what? Infi is down to 2 lumber actually. Still missing his MK. Can he get an MK back somewhere? Doesn't look like it, right? So he's still going for a hero kill. He does have 2 coils, 1 Nova. Under siege. 
It's only one tower, by the way, I just realized it. Acolyte, uh, I mean Acolyte, uh, the Arcane Tower burning the man out is actually really important now. Statues are doing their best, but the ledge! What's he doing with the ledge? He's completely out of position, but thanks to the Orb of Corrupt, he's walking to us around, squishes through. Silence on the Paladin. The staff, okay, there's two staffs. And there's no coil. Oh, there's one coil. Needs it now. Gets it. But that was the final one. I think Infi got this. Finally. Mountain King is back. Stormbolt. Didn't expect that to happen, I think. And where's the Holy Light? Where's the Banish? He doesn't even need it. Here comes the Holy Light. Executes him. Level 7. GG. And what a good game it was. Calls for Amazonia immediately. But this is everything that this match on paper was promising us. 20 minutes of epic battles back and forth. And that fight into 1-2-0's basement, absolutely one of the best that we've seen all year. This is Warcraft. This is hype. This is 1-0 for Infi. And one map away from the grand finalist Team Human now. I hope I'm not too excited and blowing this out of proportions right now. But damn, this was close. There were a lot of mistakes, of course, I mentioned this in the cast as well, but that was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we can code an... AI or something like they do for StarCraft now and then we see perfect games, but I don't care man. I don't care <laughs> So Infi taking the lead And match points now On AZ, AZ of course very hard to expand. We haven't seen it today. This is the first time we see this map. And yeah, we mentioned this WFC versus TH game before, which was one of the best. In 2014. Amazonia always promising because there is a very good, uh, very good sieges usually. The human is holding on to a threat basically the entire game. The undead tries to pressure it. Now, sometimes even with ghouls. And wagons and stuff like that. So if the human holds on, it's going to be a sick comeback there. But it's hard. So that's why 1-2-0 takes this one. AI must be banned then. Alright, 1-0 is there. We have match points on AZ. And as the game is loading, we show you the two combatants once again. Infi and 1-2-0 here. Uh, with the ELO ranking for some reason not updated yet. Maybe I have to up, like, uh, refresh Liquipedia or something. And then it works. Yeah, now it's updated. Okay, good to know. So the third best player against the fourth best player in the world. Both have been GCS champions before. And they are at the moment by far the best players of their respective races. So without further ado. Infi cementing his great statistics against 1-2-0 with that win on Last Refuge. But he wants revenge. He's bloodthirsty and he wants that blood to be spilled on AZ. Two thousand people watching. That is phenomenal here at uh, four p.m. in the afternoon. 
Did I update this? Yes, I did. So, we saw incredible fights on LR. With a lot of hero focusing at the end. I think this is going to be an entirely different game. And we see it already. It looks like a ghoul opening with a very early DK. Going for Ziggurat, Alta first, then late Crypt. Ah, and Graveshot, okay. Because the GCS, he was playing a heavy, heavy ghoul rush with this on this map. Which caused a lot of trouble for Envy. <laughs> they don't give us breaks, no? <laughs> like the entire clan war. Not as, like, only two minute breaks. This base positioning... Looks really interesting and very open. A and since we have seen attack. so many footman harasses, I don't know if that's the right thing. It's kind of an invitation from footman. But Infi is not that super greedy like he used to be. Not expanding immediately. But going for the laboratory first, which I think is a good decision. Trying to raz now. Oh, if he gets that lasted. No, Frostborn hungers even without a coil. That was nice. So he doesn't gift him level 2. He will get it anyway from this spot. Mental of Intelligence for him as well. I got a circlet. We'll be happy about that. Plus 5 damage immediately. Also, Mental of Intelligence for the Death Knight for uh, half a coil that he gets there. And snares? Uh, he does have two coils. But Ensign doesn't last last uh, la doesn't last long enough if there is only a DK. <coughs> Level two or tier two coming with Fiend opening this time on LR. It was a lot of ghoul harass, which was quite costly, but helped him. Here comes the. This is a key moment in this game. How much damage can he do? How many creeps can he steal? First peasant is down. Opens up, of course, corpses. Trying to surround immediately. Oh, what a move by Infi again. But he squeezes through there with another kill on the trapper. And now Infi is losing quite a bit. Another. Oh, nice. Gets the skeleton down before he kills that footman. Another kill on the trapper. Archmage does not get level 3 from this. Not really close. Big mana potion though. Nice. And this was the game where Infi surrounded 6 fiends at GCS. So focusing on the surrounds is key. And 1 to 0 lost almost his entire HP pool on this harass. This is never supposed to be that way. Especially not if you have no level 2 yourself. And he was too aggressive. With all those workers there and all those footmen there, there was an invitation for a surround. And he gladly accepted that. Tier 2 is almost done though, so he can get a potion. And I think he needs to invest into that potion. A player's force was it just the golem that moved away so to open up that uh, surround? Okay, I thought he might have killed the footman or something. But yeah, then even luckier. Oh, finally level 2. This is so helpful now, but Infi is attacking. He is again the aggressor with his 5 footmen that he has. 2 waterlements. Of course, the big mana is helping tremendously. Lich is coming, but will take some time. Would have loved the tavern hero now, but of course the Lich, the time, takes his toll. Very early spirit tower. To get rid of this harass, kills another footman here. So he doesn't have the critical mass anymore. And feeding the DK. Ah, oh, okay, actually didn't. The tower's got the kills. We love that water limit to die if he's trying to deny, but no. A 
player's forces are under attack. Actually, quite nice how 1 to 0 recovered until now. But this is not supposed to be that way. This is not supposed to be an Archmage in your face the entire time. You want to be at the expansion. You want to apply pressure. You want to kill workers. And the movement of Infi is so nice. Expecting the undead here. Already positioning yourself there to say hello, old friend. I don't want you to come to me just yet. Boots. Oh, in a dangerous surrounding position here. But the Lich is too fast. Seven footmen. The number is growing again. And there's no TP. He walks into a surround again. The skeletons help him. The Lich is closing and he... Wa Jesus Christ. That could have been the loss right there. Very, very, very close situations. One after another. If he gets one surround there, I think the game is over. Doesn't matter if he loses the Lich. Or the DK. It's basically over. Three fiends. Two of them really hurt. No statues yet. They're coming only now. And Infi is attacking in the meantime. Blacksmith does have a shredder already. Defend upgrade. He's in a very good position. He even has a shop up to heal this. No towers though. Usually you have this... You have to harass a lot earlier. And what can he do now with his herd army? A player's forces are under attack. It's okay, nothing. 6. He has a town portal, but again. Heal scroll being used, and the DK is surrounded there. Town portal out. He is forced to be passive for the next 90 seconds, I guess. And I love how Infi is always there. If you lose one or two footmen, it doesn't matter. It's just 125 gold. He still has the bigger potion of mana. Has his level 3 for the water elementals. Always has the upside. Tier 2. Three quarters down. done. And that's where the human fun really begins. Feels good to heal all those footmen. Indeed. They seem to have good health care in Infiland. Yesterday he beat Lolly at 2-0, so Infi undefeated in Race War so far. Same as TH, who is 4-0 as well. First Gargoyle against an upcoming Zeppelin drop. Does he still needs some time, he's going to tier 3 immediately for most likely mass air. He's going Sanctum, okay, interesting. TH and Infi, they both love mass air on this map. It's quite strong. Panda second. We've seen this a bit since GCS. It becomes kind of a trend to do so. To get rid of, uh, to do damage to multiple fiends. Because you can, well you have your statue to heal against this, but you want, you only have single target heal from coil. And so spreading the damage is nice, even if it takes a while. And you can get rid of the statues, which is the most important thing. Because you can't storm bolt the statues. A player's forces are under attack. Easy. Too easy. DK is there though, with a few coils. So not enough sustain from those... Uh, only 5, 4 footmen at the moment. Archmage is far away. I like how 1 to 0 was pressuring him off the map. So the AM is not with the rest of the army. First destroyer in the air and there is... Okay, 5 towers, that's a lot. 1 masonry upgrade. Lich closing in on level 3. Archmage with a step. Oh, two of retraining! It is blizzard time again. We saw it before from TH how well this can go. Second workshop coming up. So, Knights, Gyros again, most likely. Three destroyers. 
He seems okay. Expansion has five towers, main base has four towers. Let's fucking go! Even though I had a bad early game, he's still trying to break it. Gets rid of the second tower, gets rid of the third tower. Lots of damage. He's losing one destroy most likely. <sighs> the fireball was already flying there. He gets a lot of kills on those peasants. Quad kill with the Nova. Well invested that mana was. Staffing on. He returns the favor now with double area of effect, blizzard and breath of fire. It's a base race. The base race is on now. Two spirit towers, but they can't really attack too much. There's defense going on. He sends a few units back, especially the destroyers, since they can't be hit by the panda. Paladin is coming. There's not enough damage to kill the castle. So, Invo Potion on the Archmage. He gets rid of all the footmen first, I guess. Yeah, he can defend this quite well. Oh, that blizzard against the ghouls. That hurts. But the destroyers are taking care of this now. How much time does he have to knock down the castle? More skeletons coming. Gyrocopters against the Destros will be his only anti-air except the Archmage and Watt Limits, of course. With four skeletons, this is working quite well. He has one charge of of Necromancy. And this is going better than expected. There's no repair possible at all. Gyros are in. There's only four of them, but the Destros have no mana. Is there mana on the DK? He has full mana. He has to send the destroyers back so he can actually heal them. There we go. Castle is not dead. There's no TP. Oh my god, was this was it risky? Oh ho 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 ho! That was so risky to go for this all-in push. It worked tremendously well, but I think he has to get out of there now with no TP. I mean there's no Storm Bolt, no Mountain King in this game. He wants to break it. He wants to get rid of the castle. Still a thousand HP and two masonry upgrades. I think he has to cancel it. He's trying. He's trying so hard with everything he has. But here comes Breath of Fire and Blizzard. The Song of Ice and Fire together. He's picking up gyros left, right and center. There's not too much repair. Can he get a hero kill? Paladin is low. Can't, of course, Holy Light himself. Need to kite a bit. Still four coils. I think it starts to hurt. But he's killing one gyro after another. Good, good, good. Fight by 1 to 0 here. He needs to keep the destroyed life. Three webs, they were big. He needs a coil, coil, coil. Last second, man. His coils today on point. But now the Lich is low. Now everything is starting to fall. Gets another kill. Level 3.7. 4 DK. With level 2 Unholy Aura. But he's about to lose fiends. This micro is incredible. Fallen over. Boom! Paladin dead. There was a TP, but you don't want to use that on a level 1 hero. 27 supply for Infi. He kept this castle alive, but he's not on two gold mines anymore. This might be it. What a push and what a comeback. Looks like we're going full distance. We do! This clan war goes into map 3 in the third map. And... That was well played. I thought this would be enough for Infi. It was a great timing by 1 to 0. He couldn't wait for the expansion. He was uh, under pressure the entire game with those footmen, Archmage harasses. But... No... Solution against the four destroyers. It was a little bit too early for Infi. If he has like four gyros more or something, he can get rid of them, but the coils were on point. There was always mana. And that's so crazy about 1 to 0 that he keeps tabs on his mana pool the entire time. And so he equalizes the series. And the winner of the next map will go into the grand final of 
Race War 2017. The loser is not out. They will still face the winner of Orcs and Night Elves tomorrow. It was how he microed that fight. <laughs> this kid is so damn talented. Both are, of course. What a series already! I didn't expect this after the first 10 minutes of the game. That 1 to 0 wins this. I totally did not. And that's how awesome Warcraft is because you can't turn around maps like this. I mean, usually if you have an advantage, you expand it and then you win, but sometimes it's just amazing comebacks and turnarounds. Next and last map of this clan war is Twisted Meadows. Depending on the starting position, a very good human map. And this is not the last map of today, guys. This is just the last map of this clan war. We have Undead... No, we have Orc versus Night Elf coming up as well. Didn't expect this clan war to go full distance, though, to be honest. Not at all. For the last time, the stats of those two players. <coughs> the odds are in favor of Infi. As he has the better stats, he has map choice. And he seems to be in better shape. But 1 to 0 today is the 1 to 0 we love and the 1 to 0 we deserve. And we go on to the final map. The decision will be made here on TM. Upper left in yellow, it's 1 to 0 from China. The world champion and the former world champion and the finalist of the last World Championships. His opponent there, which was so damn close, is Infi. They faced each other three times at GCS in the group stage, in the winner bracket final and in the grand final. Two of those series went towards Infi. Only one was won by 1-0, to zero, but that was the grand final, the best of five. And so this rivalry continues. This is, of course, Archmage first laboratory creep. There's nothing 1-0 to zero can do against it. Uh, sometimes, if it's close position, we see this little acolyte here being a little magpie and stealing some creeps and stealing the experience or something like, or I don't know, there's no backpack, but what can he do here? On the other side, I think this is really good for, one, uh, for Infi to start so far away from his opponent. He can expand here, he can expand here. It's both a long distance between base and expansion. And that's what humans always want. With knowledge boots of Keltalas, the worst drop imaginable. This does not help him at all. Tome of knowledge is decent, but... No, no tome of experience, and not a good item. So Infi, not off to a good start, but of course there's so many creep spots. So many items to be found that this army will still be benefit, uh, will, will still benefit from them. DK, as I said, not harassing, not running over, not trying to kill uh, peasants with skeletons and coil. Scout tower only coming in now. There was a little bit of potential, but yeah, usually you expect to lose like two workers at least. But this spot is level two. Or close to level two. So I think on a very big map, the Unholy Aura is worth it. To skipping this round. But he doesn't get it yet. And that hurts. Maybe a coil, but there's more than 100 HP, so he can't coil it easily. 
Militia moving out again. This is the expansion creep, and the undead is right in his face. He does get a few nice last hits on that DK. And I don't know if you should tank with this. I mean, that's the kill. That's the unholy aura. Immediate speed boost. And HP regen. Trying to go for a surround, but they are expiring. How many kills can he get? It's a dangerous position. There's no second run of Necromancy anymore. Used all four charges. Gets one Trapper. This will not keep the Archmage away from level 3 though. Gets another big Watt Elemental here. And he does have one more coil in a bit. That he will use for the Ogre Mage, I most likely. There's no Stormbolt this time. Last time he had the help of the Mountain King to secure kills in those situations. But this is, the next kill is level 3 for him. And there we go. Plus a bit of mana boost from the advanced stats that he has now. It's a little bit of HP from the term of strength that he steals. But I like the right clicks. Infi positioning himself really well. Parib of Vitality also not that bad. And this fiend can't do shit either. Good. Well done. The fiend brought a new rod of Necromancy. Which is very important now to keep up the pressure. But it's so... workers. Tier 2 tech almost done. But it's as far away as it gets, this expansion. So what can he do? He needs to stall some time to heal up. At the same time, he has to do damage to keep the human away from tier 2 and 3. Difficult situation for the Town undead. Is under siege. A player's forces are under attack. It's a fiend kill here. Does it start again? The fiend surrounds. That made Infi so superior on AZ at GCS. Want to see to replace it more safe. And he abandons the idea to stay aggressive. He has to run back. Lich is coming. And statues. So this is a later tier 3 for him. A player's forces are under attack. More and more footmen. But he didn't lose too many workers. And that is an issue. And I feel Infi is safe. But I thought so on AZ before. But everything went according to plan for Infi in the early. And then later it didn't. Footman Harass cancelled with the Lich being out. Tier 3 started. Tier 2 started as well though. And the Lumber Mill for Guard Towers. The base is naked. Not even an Arcane Tower. That's how greedy he plays it for a fast attack. And 6 and 30 is a very fast attack. A town is under sea. A player's forces are under attack. Looks like it starts again. Does he have defense already? I didn't see it in the barracks, but I didn't keep too much attention to it. Level 2 water elemental. Summon to the base. Rules are there to defend, but the DK and fiends are not. At least not yet. There we go. Pressure onto the AM to force a town fall, but he has a staff. So, again, haunting the acolytes during the tag. Nice move, hits a Nova on them. So far, most of the Acolytes have survived, but they walk into a massive amount of Footmen. Killing... Oh, nice coil. And he gets the Footmen kill in return. So really well played here at this point by 1-0. to zero. But is this force too strong already? Didn't he do enough damage in the early to prevent this from happening? It's another Footmen kill. That's close to three. This Acolyte dies, though. As he has three remaining... Portal out. Another water elemental that gives him level 3. And the footman leave. So, how many acolytes are left? Four? He didn't have to cancel the attack. Four echoes? What? I thought he killed way more. 
Way, 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 way more. Also a lot of footmen dead. Still trying to hunt it down. And there's a coil. That's the next kill. Lich, <coughs> close to level 2 without creeping a single spot. The expo is running its three towers coming plus a lumber mill to wall this. Tier 3 on the way. Mountain King or Paladin Wait, second. Or is it a panda down. again? So far, we don't see it yet. But Infi lost way too much. Infi doesn't have the forces to surround anymore. It is Panda second again. Seems to be his go-to hero now <coughs> in this matchup. Does it expire? No, it doesn't. Save kill, save level two. Ooh, I was about to say he doesn't have the force to surround anymore, but actually he does. Another kill. Isn't it incredible how he fights back into this game? After the weak harass that we saw before, Infi is now forced to go into a lot of towers. 1 to 0, only 36 supply, but on the other side, 39 only as well. Range is working fine here. No one to the workers. Get rid of a few and gets rid of a one tower. He constantly has to multitask. Keep his DK alive. Harass the footmen that are remaining. Ooh, that fiend. Nova, so the Archmage can't really follow. DK is too far away, though. But he does get the save. One more Nova in a bit. Panda trying to harass with Breath of Fire, but it is not working that well. 1 to 0 saves everything. Tier 3, finished. Destroyer upgrade, hopefully finished. Yeah, first one in the air. That's good to have the spell now. Forces are under attack. Experience. He got an entire level just from from this little skirmishes there. But tier two, uh, tier three is finished. He has a thousand gold. He only has barracks and sanctum though. No workshop yet. That is really surprising to me. Orb of corruption being bought as well. And I love how he focuses on the water elementals and feeds from that. There's not too much remaining otherwise. Nice breath. Soaks up the mana. Nice save as well. Sometimes when it's an online game, you think that 1 to 0 takes everything too lighthearted and is a little lazy. But not today. Oh no, not today. He knows what's at stake. Of giant strength here. Doesn't pick it up. There we go. Lich a little more tanky can be very helpful later on and gets level 3 for this. Are under attack. It's all time that Infi buys where he gets more gold the, all the time. Panda third, uh, Pella third, and double workshop only now. So is it tanks or is it gyros? We're waiting for it. Still a level 1 panda. Still, and again, 4 1 1 heroes. For destroyer push. Again, every undead seems to play it old school with a big destroyer push nowadays. First coil. Oh, he loses the destroyer against the towers. That's not supposed to happen. Level 4 on the decay, though. Doesn't get too much mana with only three destroyers. He can't do it anymore. Sends this one back in. Risky gets a few kills, but with a big loss as well. It's tanks. And gyros. Plus a second expansion, as it seems. He's buying time as this one is sieged. Lich does have another Nova, uses it. Now! Of course, Orb of Corruption does not work against the Town Hall, otherwise this would be slightly imbalanced, I think. Upgrades coming. Destroyers are searching the Undead Army as there is no anti-air yet, so it can be really annoying. In the base, there is a web upgrade coming, but apart from that, only fiends and statues. More kills for the Lich and more towers for Infi. Infinite towers. They're helping. So he finally finds his opponent. It's nighttime though. They pass like ships in the night. The player's forces are under attack. But he knows about the expo. Get rid the water mental actually really cool to dispel and get mana here. Flag cannon upgrade is ready. 
Can you fight this? Fast reinforcements. They're not fast enough usually. In the meantime, Panda's creeping up to three. Gets a roll with the Magi, which is really nice. Nice save here as well. And he is about to break this expo, man. A lot of workers had to be repurchased. If he's still at 50. 54 for 1 to 0 already. But almost no damage against this town hall. Is there a follow up in A bombs attack. or wagons? No, there's not. Dark Ranger third again. And Red Spot for Infi. Creeping up so much. Divine Shield. Amulet of Spell Shield. This is so nice to block Coil or Nova. Or Silence. Oh, Silence doesn't work because it's not a single target move. But Area of Effect and Spell Shield doesn't block Area of Effect moves. Dark Ranger with Black Arrow. Dark arrow, I always mix it up. Lich is completely out of mana. Death Knight has still two coils. Let's see if break it. There's no repair. Dark Ranger is staying out of this here, interestingly. So, expansion broken. Second one is up in mining, though. The main gold mine, 3750. 4,100, once again a 500 gold Avengers. Now it's A-bomb time. What did he do with the tanks, by the way? Cancel them? Because I don't see them at all. And they haven't been on the base, as it seems, as well. So I might have just cancelled them for more generals. As he saw the destroyers are coming. Time to crew with the Dark Ranger. Invul Potion, also very nice. And it is the next expansion. Playing it Moon style with mass gold. And you can't attack everywhere at the same time. <clears throat> Knowledge... We got protection plus three, no, no, so be mask. Nice, nice, nice. But the next siege starts. And it worked well so far. Getting rid of the towers, there's only two guard towers. No Sim City at all. This was a greedy expansion, not a well protected expansion. The one before was uh, a way better environment for Infi. Who's going into the base? With a few breakers and his area of effect, but it's only breath. He still has the water elementals. Also, there is a town portal, but he doesn't want to defend it at all. And the worker line is completed. Very aggressive town portal in a fire bought or stolen. From the creep spot, he's trying to get the paladin, but the vine shield is working well. <clears throat> Drunken brawler, as you can see, 56 supply still. Second expan, uh, third expansion is coming up, and this one as well. Gold mines 2,700. I think he needs more a bombs for the damage against buildings. The flying machines are not overtowering him here. Is it the second red spot? Yeah. Staff of Silence would be nice for situationally, but can be dispelled of course. At the same time, 1 to 0 is pushing the expansion. Number 3. What was it? He gets the Staff of Silence, man. He needs to be quick with the dispels. This expo will not come up. It has been cancelled already. Third masonry upgrade, so this takes a little while. And a little longer than usual. Level 4, 4, 2. Still not protect. Infi is so greedy, just mass expanding instead of securing one expo. Archmage staff back, but not to the expo, just to the main. First tower down, second tower down. Does he have a town pole? Yes, he does, in the big mana. Really well equipped also the Lich here with plus 14. Mass mana on him. And mass kills as well. Will not lead to a level 5, but definitely the way there. <clears throat> this expo is back up. The main gold mine, there is 1,700 remaining. Panda close to 4, Paladin close to 4, and Rune Braces. Okay, so I think Hero Nuke is not an option. This game will go on for a while. A 
player's forces are under attack. Gyro's scouting a bit. So much creeping to be done. How big he is, right? Big fat panda. Do a diet, man. But yeah, expansion broken, expansion broken, expansion back up. And next spot secured. But 1 to 0 is doing a phenomenal job of taking out one additional gold mine after another. Ooh, this destroyer is out of position. Yeah, we'll be dead. Is the rest coming? Yeah, it actually is. Plus the DK for healing. But where to go now? I mean, you can lose a lot of time taking care of the towers. Time that Infi uses to gather more gold. Still no tanks as it seems. He's staying in upkeep, banking on a thousand two hundred gold. Maybe that's too greedy. But he has a level five Archmage. I wouldn't be too surprised to see Blizzard soon. The main issue is still destroyers though, but you just feed them. He's going to the base again. He's not expanding there, right? No, it's just a scout so. Oh, super aggressive TP! Going for the Paladin, but that wasn't the right choice. Switching up to the Panda now, who doesn't have a TP either! Oh, Infi! Ah, oh, Steph. Alrighty, alrighty. But the Archmage in trouble. He does have a TP. There's Holy Light as well. Should also be safe. So he was prepared for this. Oh, constantly scouting for more expansions, attack. but at the moment there's only one running for him. What a series this is. The game is 20 minutes old. Main gold mines will expire soon. But where to go from here, 1 to 0? You've played a phenomenal multitasking game. You have broken two expansions in a row. But your gold mine will be empty soon, too. Oh, I think there were tanks somewhere to distract a little. Surround? No. Mm. Just building towers all across the map. Ah, this one is up and running again. So four gold mines for Infi against one. Maybe I missed that a bit. And last time we saw a super all-in push. This does not work this time. It needs to counter expand somewhere. Almost every single position is occupied by towers. Main gold mine empty. As you can see on the mini map as well. This expansion 5700 left. <clears throat> he sees that there's another expo. Takes out this one. But this one will take a while. And this time is used by Infi to destroy more. Ah, the Breath of Fire could have been this without tanks. Ooh, not too many gyros, but the damage is real good. He can't flee, obviously. He's just mining with a few, this remaining 400 gold. The Dispel is a nice support. Now the gyros are spreading, so the AoE is not that great anymore. But he uses one destroyer. I think Infi has this slowly but steady. Town portal again. Can he get a hero kill? Nice silence, man. He can't go for anything. He hits all three heroes, of course. Kind of easy when there is a town portal to hit them, but realizing this and not dispelling it because it's so unusual. Kolnova! <laughs> Only 100 HP away. If this would have been Nova level 3, then the Archmage is dead and he's not that far away. So, two gold mines in production, two are mining, but only with one. And a counter expansion is coming here. Ghoul got rid of the tower, so it's most likely not scouted. He finds the rest of the army. Archmage has a TP. Might be forced into it, yeah, before the call arrives. Nice silence beforehand, but there's no holy light. But this game gets really stressful if the Archmage gets level 6. With mass teleport. Can't this again. <laughs> How much he gets done, right? <clears throat> 57 supply, 10 food advantage, gold mine down. Everything will be repaired. This costs a little. 
Diminishes his income. <clears throat> okay. He can nuke the Archmage now. With Kalnova. Okay, he handed over the Rune Braces, which is a smart choice. There is Spell Shield anyway. Orb of Fire. How often do we see an Orb of Fire? And this Haunted Gold Mine is at risk. Oh, the Acolytes! He doesn't realize! Is it enough to save this one? Yes, he does, but this is not nowhere to. No, there's no way to save it. Still got two gold mines running for Infine. He's an upkeep now. Especially this one was big. This one will be cancelled. But since he has towers almost everywhere, he can try to expand and expand and expand. Nice breath of fire, holy light combo, gets rid of the next acolyte. This is turning into a problem for 1 2 0. He was so brave, he played it so well. Seems like it's not enough. Panda is too tanky with 1k. Once again, a nice silence. Orb of Annihilation works good. There's no escape for him. If he catches a Nova, Coil Nova, Panda dead. No, Holy Light saves him. Wow, and the staff should be ready as well. Yes, he is. Oh, I thought this Panda would be dead for sure with the Paladin saving Grace. Saving Private Panda. 3,000 gold here. 10,000 gold here. DK is not with the army. Sending in the middle. For whatever reason. Just making sure this expo is not coming up again. And the mass of gyros is growing. To a dangerous, dangerous point. From 120's view. He's expanding in his face. He knows about it. But he doesn't want an open battle. He's forcing town portal after town portal after town portal. To just get rid of this 350 gold. He's this... Mantling the Black Citadel and the Crypt, so it's only Slaughterhouse remaining. He needs that gold so bad. But without the Panda, how can he get rid of those Gyros? There must be mass mana on the destroyers, otherwise they just melt! It's 75 versus 58. One to zero has to micro like a god, but there is the Staff of Silence. What can you do against it? Is this Infi bringing the Human Alliance into the winner bracket? Finally, it looks like it. One to zero is supplies like he takes out a lot of gyros though, and the destroyers reign supreme with the mana from the water elementals. He didn't reskill to Blizzard, which would have gotten him many, many kills, I think. Sorceresses killed 58. He didn't lose anything in this fight. Wow. Divine shield being used. No silence. Just a few more pickups and level 4 on the Dark Hunter. Level 5, level 5 here. Undead expansion. Under pressure. But the destroyers are there. And he doesn't have anti air. He doesn't have anti anymore. He's trying to kill all acolytes here, but one to zero still has the gold. He's just supply stuck with this. Trying to go for the archmage. This looks well town portal out. That secures his necropolis. And that's why he was oh saving that destroyer. That's why he was selling so many uh, buildings in the main. Oh no, actually he just he sold the Black Citadel as well. So I don't know. Haunted gold miners up. He should be able to get his acolytes back soon, but. Infi is still mining from two gold mines. Constantly. So the gyros will be replaced in a bit. 1 to 0 has to camp here, most likely. This should be Infi's time to expand again. He doesn't have only 200 gold left. Going to 71 supply. He knows. Okay, my opponent cannot reproduce his units. <coughs> still trying to find some kills. Shouldn't be too greedy, though. DK is far away. Can't really heal. And now they are really far away. This is a trap by Infi. And it seems to be working. Where's the magic damage? She lacks it. Only two fiends. Lich already super hurt. Destroyers must come back, but they're not. Silence on all three heroes. Well done by 1-2-0. Can he get the panda again? DK in trouble. There is no item on him anymore. Holy lead coming in soon. 
But more and more blight. This is a lot of blight. The destroyers are coming back is here on the mini map, but is it too late? There's knights. There's so many water elementals. He needs this dispel. Level 3 water torrent. He gets rid of the necropolis. He's trying desperately to get his acolytes back. But it, I think that's too much. He needs a hero kill. He's trying to go for a hero kill. But there was something healing him. And TP out. Loses the necropolis though. Is again supply stock and that's it. He was fighting brave. He was fighting like a lion. But TM is just not made for undeads against... Humans and team human is where it belongs in the grand final of things dominating Warcraft in 2014 then in a slump With TH and Infi not uh, catching up with the meta game, but in 2017 they are back and they are once again carrying the alliance into The grand final team undead thrown down to the lower brackets where they will face night elves or orcs which will be our next uh, clan war here. It's not gonna be three one on one. It's gonna be the NGL system with uh, it's basically King of the Hill system there. And man, Infi, it was just too much. It was just too much for one two zero. He can't attack everywhere at the same time as an undead. You have this one big um, army, and this major mistake of this trap. Sending in the gyros, distracting with the gyros. One to zero fell for it. He realized it super quickly. He spawned like two to three water elementals. And then this push was undefendable with four destroyers, not with the army. So picture perfect multitasking by Infi. I mean, he lost a lot of stuff, but he constantly rebuilt it. And his map control... With towers everywhere. It was just... It was all too much in the end. So, Undeads down. Humans reign supreme. 2-1 over the Night Elves. 2-1 over Undead. And now, who's gonna drop? Who's the least strongest race in Warcraft 3 currently? The Night Elves are facing the Orcs. We have Fly, Focus and Lynn versus uh, Life, Lolliot and Foggy coming up in a King of the Hill format. So... I wonder who's going to be the first seed. We will find out after a little break here because this was exhausting. And uh, we will be back with Race War 2017 lower bracket semi.